Hello Seekers, my name is Kim and bienvenidos to a Pick a Card. Before we begin, I would like to announce I will be giving one free personal reading. Yay! This is the Alchemist option. All the information on what this option pertains I will be placing here in the video. Oh yeah, it has come to my attention that some of you might be concerned that because I only offer personal readings in written format, that you might not get such an in-depth reading as you would through a video recorded tarot reading. Please know that I go in depth with all of my readings, not mattering the format. So far, all of the personal readings I have done have been from 5 to 10 pages per person and per question. So if you're looking for a lengthy reading, then fret no more. You've arrived to the right place. Okay, so now back to this giveaway. So to enter this giveaway, all you have to do is comment down below what is one of your strengths. Yep, that's all you have to do. And of course, if you can like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you're new, that would be awesome. So the portal to enter this giveaway will open from November 22nd and will close on November 25th. And I will be announcing the winner to this giveaway in my next video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so in this pick a card, we will be answering the question, what is your higher self asking you to focus on at this current moment? And we will also be looking into why you need to focus on this. What will this help bring in? What will it help heal or release? And we'll also get some advice on how to center your focus on this, okay? So of course, we'll use tarot and oracle cards for this some keywords, and we will pull out some messages from our note jar. So there are three groups to choose from, and each group is represented by a sigil, a symbol, or a doodle, if that's how you want to call it, that I have created. Okay, so for group one, we have this one. For group two, we have this one. It's better appreciated in this way. And for group three, we have this symbol. Okay, so whichever symbol, sigil, or doodle comes out to you, then that will be your group. And the timestamp for each group is provided in the comments section down below. Okay, now that you've chosen, let's get into your reading. Hello Seekers who chose group one. So as I mentioned in the introduction, I did draw these symbols, sigils, or doodles. And what inspired this one was actually the heart chakra or the heart space. Now when I connected with the energy of this group, I did see a visual of dried ground, dried dirt, so much so that there were cracks and also of like molten lava coming through. And the second visual that came through was that of a brass key. So I am feeling this need to reconnect with your heart space because all this dryness and the molten lava it can remind me of a patch of dirt or a plant that hasn't been watered and it's drying. And that, molt, that lava image, it's kind of reminding me of frustration, irritation, or even anger. It's when something comes to its boiling point and starts like surfacing through through the cracks. So if you have been feeling angry, if you've been feeling frustrated, if you've been feeling disconnected from others, or like you have no need to connect with anybody, or you've given up on relationships, be it platonic or romantic, then your higher self wants you to know it's okay to feel all of these, these emotions. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. Feel into them. Let them be. Explore them. But do not allow yourself to get consumed by them. Do not allow the fields of your heart to go completely dry to the point that no new flowers will be able to grow. Because with the visual of the key, I'm seeing this as an opportunity or like a new beginning. Being able to change your current scenario. And I don't know why, but when I was drawing um, this symbol, I ended up drawing this pattern that kind of looks like a leaf or a flower um so 
it is time to nurture yourself and nurture your heart space and i am seeing this in regards to self-love you know taking time for yourself nurturing yourself watering yourself imagine yourself to be like a plant a plant needs care and attention it needs to be water maybe you do need to drink some water maybe you need to eat foods that make you feel healthier or make you feel more uplifted i know there's foods that we really really love like for example i really love fries but when i eat too much of that my body feels way down like not just my physical body but like emotionally energetically i feel weighed down so i'm talking about foods that lift you energetically for example when i eat grapes or fruits i feel weightless and i feel more energetic so in that sense also like if you've been spending so much time indoors take some time to go outside i'm seeing this like as sun rays coming coming in and take some time to be out in the sun the sun not it not only provides vitamin d but it also helps you detox energetically it helps clear out a lot of gunk or energy that isn't yours energy that's been stagnant it helps remove any low vibrational energies that are attached to in your auric field and also if you need to cry then allow yourself to cry i don't know why i'm seeing these little dots as tears as needing to release a lot of us think that crying is a form of like giving up or giving in or a form of weakness but it is a necessity it is a bodily necessity to be able to cry because it's a form of release it's a form of detox as well that's why sometimes when we allow ourselves to cry without trying to resist it then we feel so much better afterwards it's like a weight has been lifted off us because we are releasing pent-up frustrations pent-up emotions that are weighing us down because emotions they are kept in our bodies when we don't express them and they simply become like i feel them like to be like boulders or mucky or sticky energy within us and it weighs us down we feel lethargic we feel drained we feel un motivated sometimes even how we view the world the colors aren't as bright anymore because of this so allow yourself to cry allow yourself to feel whatever it is that you need to feel at this moment in a safe manner and once you do then start being gentle with yourself i once read this you can't reach love through hatred right so you can't want to heal yourself while you're still hurting yourself be it emotionally mentally through harsh words or harsh thinking or self-judgment so it is only through love that you will be able to reach that healing that you so crave they've made studies in which they've spoken very negatively and harshly curse words and derogatory words to one plant and spoken very beautiful gentle soothing words to another plant and the plant that was spoken to very harshly withered and died pretty soon and the one that was spoken to gently and with love and with care thrived and that just goes to show you that how we speak how we communicate with ourselves and with our outside world affects us a lot internally as well as in our physical bodies so i feel it is time to start nurturing your heart start connecting with your heart space and i feel like the best way to do this is by beginning the process of self-love and i'm not saying this is a quick process this may be a slow process but that is what love is all about as well isn't it is about being patient when with one because you love them enough to be patient right like you wouldn't scream at a plant to grow quicker or force it to grow quicker because you know that it has its own timing you know that it has its own organic process and that is the same way with you you are a living being you do require time and space and that should be respected okay but now let's look into the cards mm. so we have the world tree in reverse this is the world in the rider waits tarot so the world tree for me 
I'm going to put it upright for you guys. What I always see it is representing home. It's representing a form of your higher self. It's coming back to you, coming back to the root of things. That's why I say it's like coming back home. Now, in this image, we have this labyrinth. Now, I recently discovered that there's a difference between the labyrinth and the maze. The labyrinth only has one entrance and one exit. The maze has many. You can get easily lost in the maze, but not in the labyrinth. There may be twists and turns, but there will always be one entrance and one exit. And as we can see here, the entry is the exit. And the labyrinth in this deck is, pret is portrayed as your life journey. So I'm seeing this tree as representing spirit, universe, right? It's the all being here, the almighty. It's where all of the spir spirits go back home to connect and be in oneness. And when we decide to incarnate is us coming out of this space and entering this labyrinth. So right now you're in this labyrinth. Right now you might be feeling lost and wandering. But what your higher self wants you to know here is that you're not lost and you're not wandering. You're still on your journey. Remember, you can't get lost in the labyrinth here. It might take some time for you to go back home to find your way, but you will get there. And I'm seeing this home as representing remembering who it is that you are at the core, reconnecting with your heart space. Because I always say that the heart is the seat of the, of the soul. Because the heart space represents unconditional love. And that's what spirit is. That's what everyone in the spiritual community refers to as the highest vibrational frequency. It is unconditional love. And that can be only found within. It's in the seed, and you are the seed. You're, the seed exists within you, within your heart. So it's only to reconnect with it. And it's funny how the heart here reminds me so much of like leaves. Um, and then we do have the tree being represented here. I had to pause because an airplane was flying above. So there are different seasons being represented in the tree here. And what this is saying is that there are different seasons to life. There is always constant change, but no season is eternal. So you're, if you're going through a phase in your life that embodies the winter season or the autumn season, that is the falling away of things, then your higher self wants you to know this pain that you're feeling, this feeling of being lost or wandering isn't going to last forever it is a phase that you needed to go through in order to start the other seasons because spring and summer are meant to be a part of your life as well and with it in reverse <clears throat> the first two seasons that called to my attention because we have them here it's winter and spring here so i feel like with it in reverse a phase or a cycle in your life is meant to come to a close but we can't really start the new phase of your life because in order to do that we need to reconnect and recenter it's kind of like have any of you used google maps um you know when you start when you're in the navigation and you start zooming into other places in the image where you are at gets lost and so there's this option where you could say recenter recenter to see where it is that you are currently in the map that's kind of how i'm feeling either you might be too ahead of yourself looking too much into the future i'm also feeling like this persistency like i feel like some of you might be going to a lot of tarot readers to psychics um, might be trying delving into divination or doing meditation because you want to look further into your future. You want to see more. You want to see what's ahead for you. It feels like you're very anxious about knowing what is being laid for you. That you're not really focusing on the present moment on your now. And sometimes we tend to do this because where we are right now, we're not really happy with it. Or what, because we might be going through something very heavy emotionally or just in our physical reality that we hope that we're going to have a better future, that tomorrow is going to be better, that a year from now, a few months from now, 
it won't be feeling this way. We won't be feeling this way. And so we look, we want some sense of hope and reassurance that everything is going to be okay. Spirit wants, or your higher self wants to tell you everything is going to be okay. But we can't move forward when you're 10 steps ahead. It's like, how can I explain it? It's like your body is here and you're, it's like a rubber band. <laughs> your body is here and you're stretching yourself out further, right? to the future, to somewhere that you want to be, but there's still a part of you that's here in the present. And the only part that can move in this physical world is it's, it's this part of you that's in the present. So in order to start moving in your physical world, so you will be able to see the things that you're seeing in your visions or the things that you're wanting for yourself for your future, we need to bring you back your your hindsight or your eyesight, your vision back to this present moment so that all of you is whole, merged together. That's what I'm seeing here, wholeness, so that we can start moving and progressing forward. Does that make sense? And I feel like to do that will be to reconnect with your heart space. So the heart space speaks about emotions and feelings. Again, it has to do with self-love. If you are going through some emotional hurts, your higher self is letting you know that it's okay to feel them. It's okay to let them come up so that you can release them, so that they can heal. So if you're holding in some pains from the past, then it's okay for you to express them now in a healthy way through crying. If it's in regards to someone that you can talk to at this moment, you can write a letter to them. A lot of people think that's silly, but it actually helps a lot. And then you can either tear it, burn it, throw it away some, somewhere. But that will help or you could just scream it out scream it out into the distance or if it's a conversation that you need with a family member that can be had then then have that conversation and if it's about forgiveness then allow yourself to for practice forgiveness because remember that forgiveness is not necessarily for the other person to clean them of their sins or to clean them of their mistakes but it's for you so you won't carry that anger so you won't carry that hurt anymore through forgiveness we release through forgiveness we heal and if it's forgiveness to self if it's something that you've been reprimanding yourself about that you've been overthinking in your head that you can't seem to let go because you judge yourself constantly over this then again allow yourself to forgive if it's something that you did when you were very very young know that nobody grows knowing everything it's part of the journey to make mistakes is part of the labyrinth to take wrong turns, okay? And to bump into obstacles and to learn along the way. So through forgiveness, you're telling yourself, I am allowing myself to learn and grow along the way. I'm not placing myself up to any expectations or standards, be it anyone else's or my own. Because I know that I am still learning. I know that I am still growing. And I'm allowing myself to change. And through forgiveness, you also allow yourself to change. Because when we continue judging ourselves, we're condemning ourselves to stay in a single way. We're not allowing ourselves to learn from what we perceive to be our mistakes. So do not condemn yourself because that would only keep you stuck. Forgive and allow yourself to grow because a new chapter, a new phase is awaiting for you. And it's, oh my goodness, guys, I barely noticed. Do you see the spiral here? And this that looks like the labyrinth. And then we have like these that look like leaves. It's this tree upside down. Hmm, interesting. I feel like there's this focus also on roots. And roots for me represent deep-seated emotions or maybe deep-seated fears or traumas. If you have been feeling stuck or stagnant in your healing journey, your higher self is telling you what you're looking for is in the roots. So it's time to dive deep into your subconscious, maybe through, again, meditations or maybe actually going to someone who might help you with this through hypnotherapy or through therapy to start looking at maybe wounds from your childhood or even when you were a baby or this might be even in terms of other lives that you might be carrying some trauma from those, those lives into this life that are not really allowing you to move forward 
because with the key i'm seeing like there's there's something in specific a specific event a specific moment that once you address it once you start um looking into it and healing it that would be like the key and it would bring so much clarity afterwards and it will help open this new door for the next phase of your life and i feel like that key is also representing the key to this door like the key to entering your subconscious to finding the truth the key to reconnecting with your higher self to reconnecting with your heart and again with the heart i feel like like the main theme here is about forgiveness there's something that requires forgiveness in order for it to be healed and for it to be released um so that it's not pulling you back anymore okay so now let me look at the other cards so the first one is once you do this what will this help bring in yeah you see we have journey so what i'm seeing with journey is that once you focus on this, what it will help is for you to progress and move forward on your journey. Because you see how we have the tent here? The tent always reminds me of the Four of Swords energy, which is a resting period. It feels like you've traveled on your journey and then you've reached this point where you, it was a time of being like in isolation. It was a time of healing. The Four of Swords is always about healing, about introspection. It's about a time of rest. So you needed this healing period, but it feels like you've been there for far longer than you needed to be. And it's because you haven't reached or you haven't really looked into what really needed heal healing. Because I feel like this tree being upside down and the branches being at the bottom, I feel like maybe you were reaching into other things. Maybe you were putting your focus on other things, be it either other people or like relationships or either just looking way into the future, thinking that it had to do with something in your future. Sometimes we either get stuck a lot on a purpose. A lot of us want to find out what our purpose is, why we came into this life. And we feel that a lot of our traumas or a lot of the hurt that we're going through is to get us ready for that purpose or it has to do with that purpose. Mm, I wouldn't necessarily see it that way because I feel like our purpose changes according to what interests us or what we're passionate about at this moment. It, it changes according to the seasons and the phases of our life. So I don't feel like everyone has one ultimate purpose. I don't think that's to be the case, but I get, that's in a personal opinion. But I feel like sometimes we could get stuck on that, that we don't really see what we truly need to heal or where this hurt is actually coming from. And usually these hurts come from the past. So again, from our childhood or either from other lives. So I feel like it's time to start looking deeper, to start looking at the roots, to find the root of this pain, of this trauma, of this, it could be even a fear that is not allowing you to finally come out of your tent and move on forward to the journey. Again, if you're looking too much into your future um, because you're worried about your future, you're worried that something might be taken away from you or that things are not going to turn out how you want them to, there might be some fears there, right? Fears of the future, fears of things always falling apart for you, fears of getting hurt. So that in itself is a sign that something needs to be mended or healed in that. The heart can also sometimes talk about abandonment, fear of connecting with someone because of fear of being abandoned or being left behind. And that sometimes can stop us from moving on in our journey because we fear connecting with people. We fear even starting a project because what if that project fails? What if we get really attached to it or passionate about it and it's not you know our purpose it's not what we're meant to do or what if i'm not good at this what if i really love drawing and i finally put my artwork out there and i don't get good responses then i will know that i will can never be an artist that i can't draw that i'm not good at this that will cause a lot of pain, right? So all these fears keep us back from trying. What we don't realize what we're truly doing is that we're keeping ourselves in a space and this space is causing more pain than if we actually went out there and tried and it didn't come out as we expected. Because we'll realize that maybe if the results are not as how we hoped, maybe we got something good out of it. Like if it is in terms of like some projects, let's say putting your artwork out there, 
Maybe you didn't get 500 people who liked or a thousand people who liked your artwork, but you got two or three who really were moved by the art that you did, so much so that you shifted or changed something in their lives in a positive way. I mean, that's something. And like, that's something even more bigger than getting just a thousand likes. So something beautiful will come out of your journey, but you need to get out of the tent in order to see the stars that are in the sky, in order for you to see the beautiful scenery that awaits you. You have a beautiful journey laid ahead of you. But it's time to reconnect with yourself. So what this will bring is forward movement. Also motivation and encouragement, but I'm seeing it as confidence in the self and trust in the self. Trust in you, trust in your own divinity, trust in your own powers, trust in your own talents and in your own beauty. <laughs> and then what will this help release or heal? We have release. So yeah, so what this reconnecting with your heart space, allowing yourself to connect with your emotions, with your feelings, what it will bring is release of a lot of pent up emotions that you've had. So I'm seeing these rocks as, as anything, be it like old pains, fears, doubts, or maybe scenarios that you keep repeating in your mind that once you think of them, you relive them in a way. So they keep causing you pain in your present moment, even though it's something that already was, has passed. So when we keep holding on to it and replaying it in our minds, the only thing what we're doing is that we're causing ourselves, we're letting that to keep hurting us. So it's time to release it. In the moment that you release it, you don't give it any more power. You take back your power. And I feel like this is also explaining, once you let go of all of these things that are causing you pain, you will know what they are. Once you release them, then you leave your hands empty to be able to receive new something new and I'm seeing this new as the next phase of your journey the spring it's like now you will be able to receive the seeds to plant your own trees of what it is that you want and I'm, I also see trees as representing abundance whatever abundance means to you the tree or the world also represents travel and with journey I'm seeing it as travel so for some of you that may be something that you've always wanted to do I know in the moment that I'm recording this and I and post this, we are going through this worldwide pandemic, but hopefully this will clear out. And when it does, the opportunity to travel will be given to you, right? But I feel like if you're still in this space, you might have fears of actually going out there and exploring, even though it's something that you really, really want to do. So by that time, hopefully you have released this and you won't fear or second doubt taking this opportunity to explore all of these new countries, these new places, and meet new people and form deep soul connections or deep bonds with them. Okay, so the last card is advice on how to focus on this. So we have the Seven of Swords and we have the Four of Swords. Yes, remember how I was talking about the Four of Swords from the Rider Waits Tarot? So the Four of Swords describes rest. The Seven of Swords, it's like this energy of fleeing in the night, sneaking out, a sneaky kind of energy. We have um, the, the clouds here and then we have the eye. So with the clouds here, I'm seeing it as unclarity, fogginess, also kind of in terms of emotions, like emotional doubt, like fears or insecurities. The sword energy is air energy, which also also has to do a lot with the mind, with the thoughts. So I'm seeing a lot of like being up in your head, a lot of doubts, a lot of overthinking possibly. And I feel like this is very connected with your emotions. And that's why I feel like at this moment, you're not truly connected to your heart space because there's a lot of turbulence. Like I'm seeing like your heart space is representing the sun. And then there's all, all of these turbulent emotions that are the clouds. So you can't really let the sun shine because of all of these clouds that are around it. So it is time to clear out those clouds. And what is the best way to clear them is to, if they're heavy clouds, is to allow them to, to rain, right? It's for the storm to fully come through and know that storms are a passing thing. They're not 
an everlasting thing. So once the clouds have released, right, then they clear out, they dissipate. So allow yourself to release, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to scream, allow yourself to be angry, but allow yourself to be angry for the moment. Do not hold on to that anger. Do not attach to it and claim it as yours. Because remember, these emotions are like clouds. Clouds drift. They're never stagnant. They get created and then they dissipate. That's how emotions are. They're not a part of the sky. Clouds are not a part of the sky. They're a manifestation of the weather. That's how emotions are. They're not a part of you. They're a manifestation of your circumstances and your situation, of how you're feeling at the moment. So do not attach to them. Do not label yourself according to what you're feeling at the moment. If you're feeling angry, you're, it's not because you're an angry person or you're a grumpy person. It's just because these feelings are coming out at these moments. If you feel, I'm seeing this as possibly envy or jealousy, it's not because you're a horrible person. It's because these emotions rise up. Also know that the kind of goes with like the, the, the strength question I was giving. I was going to ask like, what are your strengths and also what are your weaknesses? Because sometimes what we perceive to be our weaknesses are actually can be transformed into one of our strengths. So if you are envious, know that, that that can help you a lot because if you're envious of someone, it can represent either one of two things. Either you're seeing something in that person that you already have and your spirit is all like like a little kid. It's like, ooh, I recognize that. I want that. I want it. Like, can we show up for it within ourselves? Your soul knows that you already have it within, but you're not acknowledging it. Right? So sometimes I manifest it as en envy. And another thing, it could be like something that inspires you, that you're inspired by, or you could be inspired by to actually start fulfilling for yourself. Because you have the potential to do whatever it is that you're wanting from another person. Be it if you see it as a talent or a skill, it's because you can also develop that talent or that skill or something similar to that. But make it your own right? So it's turning that envy into something positive, something that will be helpful to you, turning envy into inspiration or turning envy as to information about yourself. With the seven of swords, I'm seeing this as like you sneaking away, like a part of you sneaking away with something. Um, for example, like maybe not wanting um, to acknowledge like a feeling, something that you're feeling or something that has like upset you. Um, if you're a person that someone has crossed your boundaries, but you're like, oh, it's okay. You know, it's okay. Um, and then the person do, does it again and you're like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, you're sneaking away with something at that moment because a part of you is sneaking away with the truth that you're actually uncomfortable, right? So it's time to start respecting your boundaries by acknowledging in the moment that you get upset. So if somebody does something and you feel uncomfortable by it, if you feel upset by it, then state it in a way. You don't have to be aggressive about it, but you can state it. Let it be known, right? And if that is repeated again and again, then you always have the choice to either step away from that relationship or not put yourself in that situation again, right? Because I also feel like like this might be people sneaking away with things that are of you. Um, so like not being respectful to you or like not asking for your permission, like sneaking away with your time, sneaking away with your energy. And I feel like this is also talking about boundaries. Seven for me is also a number of like meditation and like abundance, a lucky number. So I do feel like abundance is coming for you with the number four that speaks about protection, abundance and protection, which is very reminiscent of what this tree represents, a safe space coming back home. With this eye, this can represent, again, like I mentioned, envy or jealousy, either coming from you or it could also be coming from other people. So that's why we have the Four of Swords in this card, because maybe there is a time where you need to protect your energy. But there, there are certain people that you feel drained, energetically drained. After you meet them, you get migraines, you get headaches. Then that could be a sign that these people might not be the best to be interacting with at this moment so a time to retreat you know take a step back from like maybe hanging out with them a lot or connecting with them 
um, to reclaim your energy and set your own boundaries. I'm also see that I also see this as you will be gaining clarity. You are in this resting period, but as soon as you start meditating on this, seeing what it is truly hurting you, allowing yourself to connect with your heart by feeling your emotions, by feeling your feelings, then that is when you will be gaining clarity something i'm seeing this like your third eye will open and you will be able to finally see and you will need you won't find the need to go to other people to see your future for you because you will be able to see now the possibilities or the options laid ahead of you through your own inner vision okay and I don't know why I'm getting like creativity for some because I feel like the heart space also has to do with like creative connecting to your inner child and the inner child is all about imagination. So I feel like if you trust yourself enough and you trust the work that you do and if you it's not even like bet on yourself if you invest on yourself and you and you go ahead and if you are like a creative person you put your creative work out there it's going to be a journey. I'm not going to say you're going to get instant recognition. It's going to be a journey, but if you're persistent, if you're committed to yourself, to your work, if you believe in yourself, then this is telling me that you will gain the recognition. A lot of people will admire you. And I feel like at this moment, like a lot of people might be envious of you or jealous of you. So it is very important for you to have already known how to protect your energy. Mm -hmm. And how to release also like harsh critiques or harsh negative comments, not allowing them to attach to you, like release them. Know that these are just perspectives. These are just opinions of other people. It's a harsh truth, but not everyone is going to like what you put out there. Yeah, it sucks, but not everybody is going to like what you put out there. But it's kind of being more mindful of the people who do appreciate your work or, or seeing maybe how you can improve or how you can perfect your skill and not getting attached to any harsh commentary or comments or believing that you're not worthy or your work is not enough because of these comments because they're just a few people. It's just a few perspectives. It's not the truth. Okay, so let me pull out some keywords. Okay, so, oops, out here we have listen. So I feel like this is describing listen to your intuition, listen to your heart, reconnect with your heart. I feel like your heart is trying to tell you there's some hurts and pains that need to be released. And it's okay to listen to that. And it's okay to feel into that. That does not make you weak at all. It requires a lot of strength to go through this. And you have it. You have that strength. We have relationships. So again, this might be in terms of relationships. And it's also kind of, if you're centering your focus on, lot on like I was mentioning before, on other relationships, on future relationships, on your present relationships, then it's time to refocus your attention on the primary relationship, which is the relationship you have with self. So again, practicing self-care and self-love. The most important relationship you will ever have in this life will be the relationship with yourself. Um, we do have support. So like I was saying, for some of you, you might um, require support to go through this inner journey or this healing work. And it's okay for you to ask for help. For help. Once you ask for the help, the help and the support, the right support will be given to you to heal this and to release whatever needs to be released, okay? So again, like therapy, hypnotherapy, a healer, a medicinal man or medicinal woman, okay? So we have commitment and we have finances here. So again, with this falling here by the eye, I feel like your finances will get better once you refocus the attention to yourself also to like what sparks your joy what comes from your heart if you're very worried about some project and you're mostly worried about finances and revenue but how can i say this like if you started some creative project but the first intention of it was to get some revenue out of it and you're frustrated because it's not going well, like people are not really being gravitated towards your work, you're not getting the recognition you feel you deserve, then I feel like your higher self is telling you, why are you doing this? Are you only doing this for finances? Didn't you really once love doing this? Like, didn't this bring you joy at one point? Like, maybe if it's painting or drawing, didn't you just do this because you liked doing it? 
And if that is so, then there, your higher self is asking you, reconnect with that. Do not worry about the finances or the numbers that much. I know it's something important in this physical reality, but truly allow yourself to just enjoy what it is that you do. Allow for what it is that you put out there to come from your heart space. So connect with your work, connect with what it is that you're creating. And we assure you that once you do, once you're being more authentic with your work, then that's when the recognition will come in. And that's when your finances, you're going to see a difference in your in your finances. Um, and that's what I feel like with commitment. It's like committing to your work, truly committing to your work. But again, from why this inspired you. And like I said, like I feel like for some of you, the journey is not going to be easy. But as long as you believe in yourself, as long as you commit to your work and commit to you, and to your goal, then you will get this recognition and you will see a positive outcome in terms of your finances. Yeah, you see, and what's waiting for you is a new beginning. <laughs> and you see inspiration. I feel like this is talking about being inspired all over again. And with the beginning, I feel like once you release this, release this frustration, release this anger, then you will feel that inspiration again to continue on your journey. And a lot of ideas are going to come in as well that are going to attract a lot of people. Okay, it's a message for group one. <sighs> Yeah, there you go, you guys. Be fearless. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some clarity, some guidance. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next moment, bye-bye. Hello, seekers who chose group two. Okay, so as I mentioned in the introduction, I did doodle the symbols or sigils and the inspiration behind this one was actually the throat chakra. So the question I get with this one is, what is it that you want? And when connecting with the energy of this group, I did get a visual of a needle and a thread. So that also reminds me of focus but it's also representing intention. Because I feel like when you place the needle on the thread is when you're ready to start stitching something up. So you're clear on your intention, you're clear on what it is that you want to do. I feel like for this group, there might be some indecision going on, indecisiveness, or some confusion on what is it that you do want for yourself, or what is it that you want to pursue, or what's is the next step. I feel like some of you might be also like, what, what is it that inspires you? What motivates you? And, and being undecided about this or feeling like you don't know is keeping you right, at, I feel like, at a crossroads or just like at a split road. You don't know which path to take, left or right. Okay, so that's what I feel for this one. But now let's look at the cards. I'm going to face it like so the first card is to get the general energy, answering what is your higher self asking you to focus on. And we have the king of stones, wolf in reverse. So this is the king of pentacles and the rider waits tarot. Okay, so stone energy, pentacle energy is earth energy, which is a slow moving energy. And I do like it that it's in reverse because this is telling me that we're moving away from a cycle. We're moving forward. Now, the wolf, let me place it up right for you. The wolf here, I always see it as a lone wolf, a wolf that, that has been separated by, that has been separated from its pack, that is calling out to its pack, to its tribe, to its soul family. And I feel like a lot of despair and anguish here, like feeling lost, feeling abandoned, not knowing where to go. And with it being winter here, I don't know why this just came up. I don't know if it's true, but um, I feel like when it is snow, um, maybe it's more difficult for them to send out things because of the snow, because of the coldness or the cold air. So I'm feeling like a loss of direction because canines do find their way through scent. So with it being in reverse, 
but we're coming out of this phase of not knowing what it is that we wanted to put our attention to, not knowing what it is that we wanted to commit to, because this is the king of pentacles. Pentacle energy is about longevity. It's about commitments. It's about working on something, being committed on something and working on it. That is the king of pentacles energy. It's also about like investing in something. So for some of you, you might still be up in your head of what it is that you want to invest in, what it is that you want to commit to, or maybe an opportunity has give, been given to you and you're not sure whether this is what you want to commit to. And I don't know why, but I'm feeling the sense of a conflict between the emotions and the logic. So the mind and the heart. The pentacle energy is more about concrete things. What is sustainable? What can give in the long run? If this is an offer that's been given to you in any way, be it a project, be it a romantic offer, then you're looking at, will this work for the long run? Will this give me in the long run? Will it sustain me? Will it be enough? in five years, 10 years from now. And not really being able to know whether it will or not is causing some sense of anguish. Maybe the decision there, maybe you already decided whether it is the logical way to go about this or the most stable way to go about this, but I feel like your heart is telling you otherwise. Like if it's you planning to start your own business or to make your hobby into your primary job so like you like doing pottery and now you're wondering whether you should focus solely on this on selling your work selling your pottery doing this for a living but you're seeing that maybe like your finances aren't that good like what if like what if it doesn't sell what if people don't like it what if what if it won't provide for me in the long run and in the long run will, will this still be something that i would want to do is this something that can provide for me for years to come? And possibly your mind is telling you, no, 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 like a bunch of no's, right? But then your heart is all like, but this is what you really want to do. This is where you want to be investing all of your time and energy to. This is what you're passionate about. So there's a conflict there. There's an anguish. So you don't really know what it is that, what, that you want. So I feel like the primary thing to focus on at this moment is... Your higher self just wants you to ask yourself the most important question. What is it that you want? What is it that you stand for? And what is it that you want? If you want to start on something, but you're afraid of whether it's going to work out, whether it's going to get back to you, then go back to the roots. Why is it that you even started this notion of maybe even thinking about starting this or pursuing this. Why are you still even contemplating this? There must be a reason for it. Because we do have the full moon here and we have winter energy, which is water energy. And the moon does connect with the water element. So I'm seeing this about connection with emotions and feelings, also about like your subconscious and also about your intuition. So I feel like there's this intuitive gut feeling that's telling you everything is going to be all right. Or maybe it's telling you, like, uh, maybe be aware of this, be cautious of this. So listen to that gut feeling and go back to that question of what is it that you want? I feel like also this might be for some of you, something is being pushed on you that you're not really certain about, but other people around you are telling you, hey, no, it's a good choice, go for it, or this is a good person. You should try out this relationship. You should commit. Or maybe they're like, um, say yes to the marriage because you're already, I don't know, certain age. And what if nobody ever asks you again to marry them? I mean, I, I don't know, something like that. And you're being pressured by all of these outside noises. And your voice in the process is being dimmed. Like you're not being listened to. Your voice is kind of being shut down. And it's time for you to take a moment I guess that's why we have the lone wolf here because maybe he is still with his pack but he just needed a, a moment to himself to release, to let out this 
call of frustration and anguish of despair because now he's confused because he doesn't know exactly what he wants or because he's not being listened to. So take a moment to yourself to ask yourself the questions. And once you take a moment to start asking yourself this qu these questions, some answers are going to pop out. And just allow yourself to listen to your, listen to your answers. Write them down, meditate with them. See which one is it that you connect the most with. See which one is it that inspires you the most, that gets you excited, gets you motivated. That's where your answer, your true answer will be. For this group, it is time to start focusing on what it is that you want and then start working on that and committing to that. And also like letting your voice be heard, speaking up, letting your wants be known, your desires be known, because this is your life. The people around you are not going to live your life. You're the one who's going to have to live with it and work with it. It's time to start paying more attention to yourself and a little less attention to what others want for you. Because maybe they have the best of intentions, but again, they're not the ones who are going to be filling your shoes. They're not the ones who are going to be walking that path that you decided to take, okay? So at the end of the day, the choice that you make, let it be your choice. Your choice, truly. The first one is, what will this help bring in? We have duality. Okay, so duality for me, it reminds me of that indeci indecisiveness I was talking about, like having one root and having the other root and not knowing which one to choose. I do have this card here. It's the two of bows. Um, so like the two of wands. And that card is about decisions. But what that card for me always represents is that it doesn't matter which choice you take because at the end of the day, it will lead you down the outcome that you want. What I'm seeing with this is, because I did get this idea before, if you're looking to have a sustainable life or like a stable income, but you also want to do what it is that you love and you're between choosing both. So you're like, if I want a stable income, I need to get a nine to five job. And if I want to do what it is that I want, then I have to let go of the stable income. I have to play it. I have to bet on it. I have to take a risk. When you're following your passions, it's not about taking a leap of faith or taking a risk. Because if your gut is telling you, if your intuition is telling you it's time to pursue this, it's because there is a favorable outcome for you, right? It might not be right from the beginning. It might take some time because everything takes some time, but you are going to get all that you want at the end. That's what I'm seeing here. Like, you don't have to choose only one thing. You can do both. Have you ever thought about merging both of the, both of the things that you want? There is a merge here. See, we have two colors coming together to make a new color. So this is talking about, I'm seeing it as like, you don't have to choose in regards to this. You can have it all. Because if you go into the mindset of starting something, thinking that that's not going to fulfill you completely, then it could almost be assured that it won't fulfill you completely because you're in that mindset. But if you're going to something new thinking, yes, it's going to require some work, but at the end, I am going to get the outcome that I want, then it will be, you will open yourself to that possibility. That's what I'm seeing with duality. I'm also seeing duality as a sense of balance, of realizing that you're not a one dimensional being. It's not always going to be one concrete way there's always going to be another side to it there's always going to be different ways to go about things like the world is not one dimensional it's not even two dimensional the world is multi-dimensional just like yourself there's so many colors and facets to you and it's time to explore them all it's also the same thing here and i feel like this is also in regards to knowing what it is that you want um and not feeling like you only need to want for one thing and also by like letting your voice be heard. If you're a person who's constantly calm and constantly peaceful and going with the flow, going with what everybody else wants and like you've realized that there's this other side of you that 
gets frustrated sometimes, gets angry, that maybe wants to do something for herself or himself that doesn't doesn't go with what everybody else wants. And you're kind of scared by that, right? Because it's not what everybody is used to. It's not even what you're used to, this new person that's coming through. Do not be scared by that because remember, you're multidimensional. You're allowed to have your own feelings. You're allowed to have your own emotions. You're allowed to have your own beliefs, your own viewpoints, and you're allowed to want for yourself specifically that you're allowed to want for yourself even if these wants don't go with what everybody else wants for you doesn't make you a terrible person doesn't make you unfaithful or unloyal in that sense if your parents want you to be a doctor but you want to be a pottery maker then that doesn't make you a bad person it just it's just it just makes you a person <laughs> it just makes you a person who has her or his own beliefs and his or her own wants because you're whole on your own like even though the wolf is part of a pack the wolf is still a wolf the wolf is still an individual wolf so that's you and the king of pentacles also talks about an entrepreneur um like I also see like a CEO, someone who owns their own business, someone who starts their own business from scratch. So again, if that's something that's calling out to you, then do not immediately shut out this possibility because I think your higher self is telling you here, it is possible. But first be firm and have your intentions very clear on what it is that you want so that you can start building from there. Right? Keep pentacles, pentacle energy is about having firm and stable foundations. So in order for this to be stable, build your foundations on firm intentions. Okay? So I'm seeing this also as like bringing in like this openness, this freedom, and also allowing you to open yourself to all the possibilities, not closing yourself to it being only one way or the other ways, like opening yourself to all of this abundance, to all of these colors. Okay? So the next, next one is what you will be releasing or healing. And we have strength. We have the lion. The lion for me represents courage, resilience. I also see it sometimes as perseverance. And the strength card always reminds me a lot of the magician card because of this infinity symbol here. So it's about manifestations. It's about you. It's a kind of this kingly energy right? You starting something from scratch, you manifesting something out of nowhere, and then building upon that. With the strength card, I feel like this is a sense of releasing these notions that you're not a leader, right? Like for some of you, you like I said, you might go along with what other people want. So it's like this follower kind of energy, but it's telling you, a hey, you're a leader, that's what the lion is. He's a leader of his herd. So it's releasing this notion that others have to make the decisions for you or you have to go along with what others say because maybe you don't know what's best for you, right? When in truth, it's like, you know what's best for you. You know what it is that you want. And sometimes the choices that we make might not lead us to like the most favorable path right like the path that we take sometimes might be bumpy but that doesn't mean that you made the wrong choice that means that it was part of your journey because i assure you that even though that road was was bumpy you're gonna learn something from that right you're gonna learn to never make that turn again or to be better equipped next time or what tools to take to be better equipped so this journey is for you people will sometimes criticize judge your journey but that's not really for them to say because they're not the ones traveling, walking through that journey. This journey was specifically designed for you. So if they don't see fit to it, it's maybe because it's not part of their journey and it isn't because it isn't their journey. But it's perfectly, it's perfect for you, okay? I also feel like this energy of perseverance, I feel like with this, you're going to be releasing that indecisiveness or mistrust within the self you will be more confident in your decision that's also what the line is about it's about confidence because now you will know what it is that you want now you will know who it is that you are what your beliefs are what your intentions are so whenever you make a choice in your decision you already have some background information you have some foundation you have something to go from right so you will have confidence in what you are choosing you will trust more in yourself 
and what it is that you're creating and manifesting. I also see the lion as a very creative and passionate energy. We do have flowers here, and I'm seeing this as representing all of the things you will be creating. Um, I don't know why I'm seeing it as a chain. I don't know, like possibly for some of you guys, if the entrepreneur energy is um, resonating with you, I feel like what you are, are building, it's going to take some time, but I feel like it because it's going to grow into something big. Um, like I'm seeing chains, if something changes at a restaurant or maybe a clothing stores or something. It's like it's going to grow and inspire others. It's just going to keep growing and growing and growing. And I'm also seeing these flowers as form of protection. Also, like I said, like inspiring others um, or also forming deep bonds or partnerships throughout this journey that you take because again you will be learning that you don't only have to dedicate yourself to one thing meaning like if you start a project or you start working on something um, or you create a store right going back to that pottery if you start creating pottery um, but you think like oh, okay no it's only going to be pottery I'm only going to create pottery but then you close yourself to everything else, but you're also very good at drawing and that's something that you really enjoyed doing in your past and you don't allow yourself to open up to that because you think you're only supposed to be doing the pottery, then that will close like a, a door for you, right? But if you open yourself, if you see you could do more than one thing, you can open yourself and let your creative energy flow, then you realize, hey, I also like drawing. Maybe I can create illustrations. Maybe I can sell stickers or maybe I can sell postcards. Maybe I could do art prints and start selling those. And that opens a new revenue for you. That opens a new door for you. And I feel like that's a way with connecting with other types of people, people who enjoy doing illustrations. Uh, maybe you get an offer to do a children's book, like an illustrations for a children's book. And that's something you never even truly imagined because you were thinking, oh, pottery is the only thing I will be able to do. Um, but no, like you can branch. I'm seeing branches here. This will allow yourself to branch out into many, many things, but it's only when you realize that you're multidimensional, you have more than one talent. Your talent that you have, or if you're focused on one talent, that talent can branch out into many other um, fields or into many other skills. So let yourself branch out. Let yourself come to the forefront for once and let yourself, let your voice be heard because something beautiful will come of it. And even if it's something different, than what your group of people that you hang around with normally is, then that is okay because you're bringing a new color to the table. Like when you speak out, you're putting a new color into the world, okay? So this is about bringing in leadership, releasing this idea that you have to go with what other people say or that you don't have the um, ability to create the life that you do that you want to live because you do have that. And the last one is advice on how to focus on this. Perfect. And we have the two of swords and it is the star. So the two of swords, two energy of duality, same energy here. And it's the two of swords. So the two of swords normally talks about indecisions. Um, it's not knowing which way to go. It's kind of being in your mind because sword energy is air energy which has to do with a thought. So it's being in your mind about two things. And usually the two of swords in the Rider Waits Tarot, I'll place an image of it here somewhere, is this woman who is, I believe she's sitting down and she has a blind over her eyes and she has these two swords that are that she's holding on to crossed over her chest, right? She feels like she, like she has no control over her life. Like she can't decide for herself like she because she doesn't either have the information or she doesn't have the knowledge or the tools to choose correctly or to choose wisely right and this belief might have been instilled by others like that you you never choose right for yourself and that's not the case because i feel like it's not that you never choose right for yourself it's just that you haven't been given the opportunity to choose for yourself and now it's the time to do so. Now it's the time to get up to the podium and speak your mind. Now it's the time to decide. I feel like for some of you, you might already even know what it is that you want, but you're scared to choose this because it goes against like your family's beliefs or other people's wants. Um, and so 
your 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 FV about choosing this, but it's time to choose for you. I mean, it's very that's I mean, it's very nice that you care for others and that you want for others to be happy. And I don't I don't it's because I just don't want you to feel like a villain or a bad person for pursuing what it is that makes you happy. Because you deserve to be happy as well. You deserve to shine like the star. The star reminds me also of being leader, of being center stage, of being seen. Of being seen for your light, for what you bring, for shining in your authenticity. It's okay. And I hope that you do. I hope that you get to do what it is that you love and brings you joy. Because I don't feel it's a bad thing that you're hoping for. I feel that it's something that's going to bring light and joy to many other people as well. And maybe it might take some time for your parents or for your family or for your group of friends or for your partner to see this, but they will see it because it's like the star. It's like you cannot not see it, okay? And I feel like with the star here, it's also like representing many facets. It's many facets here. You're multidimensional. You're not a coin. You're not two-sided. Don't limit yourself for you are limitless. And I feel like again, if it's a business you're planning to do, it will it will be successful. It will be successful and I feel like it it will it will even be at the center stage. If if it's in a certain field, it will be like the center stage during a time. Like everybody will know of this, it will everybody would admire it, want from it. And I also feel like a lot of people will come to you for advice um, because your sister, your story will be like a success story. It will inspire a lot of people. That's what I was seeing here. Now with this, it's just how to focus on this. Be real with yourself. First, be real with yourself. Be authentic with yourself. Tell yourself, look in the mirror and tell yourself what, what it is that I want and answer your question. And if it rings straight true to you, then I hope you have the courage to let others know as well and i do feel like you you do because you do have this like this energy within you you are the star you are a king you are the courageous lion you are multi-dimensional you are a leader you were meant and born to be the star and a leader you have it in you okay it's only time to start believing in yourself because your higher self believes in you i believe in you Okay, so let's see what we have. Practice. So yes, I feel like this is practice letting your voice be heard. Practice speaking up. Practice telling others what makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, what the things that you want to do. If they if they ask like, where do you want to what do you want to eat today? Say what it is that you truly want to eat today. Practice just letting your ideas, your beliefs be heard. Commitment. Um, with commitment and the Two of Swords, I feel like this is talking about committing to your choice. Like committing to yourself, committing to your own beliefs, and committing to your own wants and to your choices. Remember that the choices we make are always ours. Whether it be a choice that we like or don't like, they are always ours at the end of the day. So if you make a choice but you're unsatisfied with it, remember that this is the choice that you made. So if you know you're going to be unsatisfied with that choice, then make a choice that brings you joy. Because now you know it's coming from you. This choice that you make is coming from you. So I feel like commitment is also talking about taking responsibility for your choices. Okay, remember, this is your journey. This is not the journey of anyone else's. This is yours. Listen. Listen here with strength card about, I feel like this is talking about listening to your intuition, listening to your own wants and needs. And I feel like this is also talking about like defending that, realizing that listening to yourself is not a bad thing, that you are an, an independent individual. Okay, so the last one is love. Aww. With the king of stones in reverse, we have love. So I feel like this is talking about you may tend to do this for others. You may tend to make certain choices for the love that you have for others. But it is time to start showing yourself some love. Okay? 
it is time to start showing yourself some love through your choices. If you feel like making others happy is showing yourself some love, if that makes you truly happy and there is no sense of remorse or anger for having to choose something that others wanted for you, if at the end of the day what you feel is pure joy, then proceed. But if you do feel some sense of anger or frustration or resentment towards others for choosing what they wanted for you, then you know that it is time to start changing things up a bit and start doing things for you. That is not a selfish thing because it, it will be coming from a space of love. This is not saying like do something that goes against what your loved ones want for you to be a rebel or to make them mad or angry or sad. No, this is because you're following something that brings you joy and passion. This is about giving yourself some love through your choices, okay? Now, this might also be in regards to a connection, a relationship. I was talking about that in the beginning, like marriage, because we do have commitment and love here. It's the same thing, okay? Mm, I know there is still some like arranged marriages, but if you can, if you can let your families know what it is that you're feeling, I feel like because we do have love here, they genuinely love you and they do want what's best for you. So you describe to them what you feel is best for you. You give them reason. You put your heart out there. Then I feel like you will you will be listened to because we do have listen here. So you will be listened to, okay? But give yourself that opportunity. People can listen to you unless you speak up, okay? So the last the message okay, the group three. Open your heart, and when you do, think of me. Okay, this might be pertaining to someone else, but I feel like this is pertaining to yourself. Like, your higher self, your inner self is asking you to, to open your heart and to listen to yourself. It's like, I don't know why I'm saying this as open your heart as when you make a decision. When you're making a decision, you're opening your heart to possibilities. So when you do that, think of yourself. Think of what your wants, what your desires are, what your passions are. Okay, and do it from a space of love. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance and clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next moment, bye-bye. Hello, seekers who chose group three. So as I mentioned previously in the introduction, I did doodle these sigils or symbols and the inspiration behind this one is actually the third eye chakra. So when connecting with the energy of this group, I really didn't see any visuals. My attention was mainly pulled towards my breathing. So I feel like your higher self is asking you to focus on your breathing. And what I get from that is being mindful Maybe some of you used to practice some forms of meditation, but you have stopped um, and it's time to reconnect with that or to restart those practices. I was feeling a lot of pressure on my forehead between my eyebrows, which for me represents the third eye. And I do feel like it just it's connecting to meditation, taking some time to ground yourself, to be present in the moment. Um, because even this image here, we see how it spirals, but then it like it anchors down. So it's like pulling yourself back. And it's not necessarily meditating to gain answers or to see visions or to connect with a spirit or with your higher self or with the guide. It feels more like being mindful of the breath or meditating simply just to find stillness and silence because I feel like for some of you what is being asked of you is to relax, to bask in the silence. With this here, I don't know why, but I feel like this is representing the breath, the exhale. Sorry, I had to pause and restart because the focus of the camera was unstable, starting to shake a lot. Um, so again, I think that's telling us there's there's need to be some some type of stillness here. And like I was mentioning, this this kind of reminds me of a drop of water. It's like being so still and silent within that you can could hear a water drop, like you know, like 
when the faucet is leaking you could hear the water drop and, and it doesn't it doesn't cause you to be irritable i mean like maybe some of you have been feeling like that like irritability um you get upset easily and sometimes these emotions might just come out of nowhere or things or what you feel to be simple things kind of irritate you and you're wondering why because this doesn't feel like your normal self and again i feel like your higher self is telling you all you need to do is breathe just focus on your breathing take some time to breathe because as i mentioned previously in one of the comment sections i think it was in the in the previous video most of us tend to take shallow breathing. If you focus on your breathing, you will realize that we don't deep breathe. We take very shallow breathings. And if you ever look at a baby, when the baby is sleeping, you will realize that they breathe deeply. And when they breathe, their tummy rises. So they're not breathing through their chest. They're actually breathing through their, through their diaphragm. I believe that's what it's called, diaphragm. So when we breathe through there, that's where we can take the deepest breaths and then we exhale. And that's why I feel like a baby's sleep is also a very deep sleep because they're deep breathing, they're relaxing, they're finding stillness within. So if you're wondering how to find peace, then mindful breathing is something that maybe you could turn your attention or your focus on. And also, the third eye does speak about clarity. So if you are trying to find some clarity on a situation, or if you've been trying to connect with your intuition or listen to your intuition, then mindful breathing might be the key for you because breathing also helps us to clear out energy it's kind of like clearing out all the noise all the fogginess just imagining the breath you intake is clarity and the breath you exhale is all of the doubts and securities all of the fears so it's that fogginess that murkiness that you're exhaling and so that's how you can bring clarity also relaxation to the body I, I know I'm getting this message of coming full circle and again I think that's connecting back to the breathing like it will allow things to come full circle and I'm feeling that may also be representing if you tend to go into a negative cycle either negative thinking or anxieties or you start feeling low something triggers you and you know that you're gonna start feeling low pretty soon in that moment that you feel you're being triggered, focus on your breathing. I know sometimes it's hard to do so to remind ourselves to do that when we are in the moment. But if you do remember, if by whatever chance you remember about the breath, please focus on the breathing. Take a deep breath, hold it in for a few seconds and then breathe out very slowly. And that will help you to recenter and to also help with your nervous system because remember the breathing helps with the regulation of a lot of bodily functions so like the nervous system and it also helps us kind of retract from that fight and flight response so if that's what usually gets you into that cycle the fight or flight response then again breathing will help you recenter and clear out any fears or anxieties i know there exists a lot of like mindful breathing exercises so maybe researching into that and remember that meditation it usually is just that is focusing on the breath and finding stillness through that yeah and i was talking about this with my friends a while back how most of us perceive that meditation is something that you have to schedule in because you have to find a quiet place to sit down, cross legs somewhere and, and you know, and stay silent for a long period of time. But meditation can be done anywhere and it can be done at any time and at any moment even when you're walking around even when you're cooking even when you're dancing even when you're running or washing the dishes you you could be meditating at that moment meditation is only mindfulness meditation is about awareness meditation is about mindful breathing so as long as you're practicing that then you are meditating Okay, meditation is also about observing without, without judgment. And I'm also seeing this as 
helping bring balance, focusing on bringing balance within self. Okay, so it can also just be representing taking a break for yourself, taking a time of rest for the self to be balanced your energy. Um, okay, so the first card is to represent the general energy. So it will tell us what is your higher self asking you to focus on, okay? Mm, so we have Ten of Stones, the home. So this is the Ten of Pentacles in the Rider Waits Tarot. So the Ten of Stones, it's a very nice card. Yeah, it's about stability, longevity. It's about the home. It's about a safe space. It's where you feel at peace. I think that's where the message came through. Like everything finally has come full circle. It's like finally reaching the end of your journey. And it's been a long, long journey. And you can finally take off your shoes, take off your heavy coat and rest near the fire. Drink your cup of tea with the people that you love. And it's realizing that all of that journey was leading you here. And it's finding home finally coming back home such a safety and warm feeling but i am seeing with this card balance right we do have male represented here and a feminine figure here female figure so i'm seeing this as balance between the masculine and the feminine energy and it's realizing that you need both of these energies we all have those two energies within us and we need both of them both of them are important because both of them are the pillar and are the foundation so that you could start building upon and this is the archway this is kind of the frame the entrance to home to where it is that you want to be to where it is that you want to reach so there might be a need to focus on your home, on your family, but I'm also seeing this as focusing on your foundations, focusing on balance, balance balancing things out, either balancing things out in your relationships or getting your family, realizing that no one is more or less important than anybody else. If you're feeling like you're being less valued or that you're less important, it's realizing that is not the case because we have it here right? We could be representing in sexes, genders, and energy. It's just what one brings, what the other one brings, but we're seeing that they're both equal here. No one is less or more than the other. Both of them are equally important. Both of them are equally needed to build a firm foundation, to start growing something beautiful out of this. I was feeling like this sense of irritability in the beginning. The energies are pretty crazy. By the time I'm recording this reading and like posting this video, we're in 2020 and the energies have been pretty crazy and we have been in quarantine. So that means staying longer hours at home with family. And sometimes when we're in an enclosed space with the same people, you know, arguments can arise. It happens. Especially if we're not accustomed to being with these people for very long hours of time. So if you feel like there has been a lot of conflict at home, then your higher self is telling you it's time to focus on this, on these relationships. And if you get triggered easily by family members or again because frustration has built, built up, then I think that's where the mindful breathing came through. That will help a lot for you to like let go of that frustration. Realize that that's just like some pent up emotion or energy that's building up. Because that's what I feel like with the stones here. It's like building up. Has been built up there. And it's just finding some way, like a gateway to be released. And in those moments um, that something a bit pushes your button or ticks you off, then that is when that emotion or feeling is like, oh, there's an opening, there's an opportunity, let's go through it, let's hit it. And it usually hits, that's what I'm seeing here, it's like the feeling, the frustration is seeing through this entrance, this gateway here, sees the opportunity, it's like, oh, let's hit, and it hits at home, hits family. Um, so before you direct it at someone, direct your frustration at someone, take it out on someone um, or something, um, take a moment to breathe. I once heard like breathe in and breathe out three times and then like that will help you recenter before you say anything. It's also like being mindful of what you say, kind of the message of thinking before you speak. 
Um, again, if this is like not you, but this is, has been someone in your family who's been like being pretty moody, it's been, or it's been a pretty like mean reason, then no, it's not because of you or because you're doing something wrong. It might be just that there's like a pent up frustration or emotions. And if it, it is the case that there is an imbalance in the home, that someone is making you feel like you're worth less, your higher self wants you to know that is not true. That is absolutely not true. You are as equally important. Your presence matters. What you bring to the home, to the family, to the relationship is important. You are important. I am seeing two pathways here and coming to the home, like two different pathways coming together. So I am seeing like this is in terms of relationship, but again, relationship is bringing me back to the sense of balance and equality. And it's like this message, it's only through this balanced relationship that a mm, supportive or healthy home will be able to grow. Because we do have a tree being represented here at the roof of this house. Like this tree is representing the home, which reminds me of the world tree, which we did get for group one, for group one, because the tree reminds me of home, coming back home. If this is not only in terms of your family life, um, if this is like in terms of an internal journey, like if you feel like your family life has been okay, has been healthy, has been stable, but you feel conflict within, I feel like this is also representing creating a safe space for yourself and within yourself. It's realizing that you yourself are a home. Home is not just the physical place. It's not just the house. It's where you feel safe. So your body, your own being is your own home. So it is crucial for you to feel safe within your body, within yourself. And I feel like what is needed to, to create a safe space is balance. Realizing you have two energies. Masculine, feminine. Masculine is all about action. It's like a goal-driven energy. It's creating. It's building. Feminine energy is more about nurturing, intuitive, creativity. Like the fem feminine energy imagines and the masculine brings those imaginings into reality. Works on it to make it real. And the feminine is also about receiving, allowing yourself to receive, right? So having these together are very important, both of them. So it's not only about daydreaming and imagining, but it's also about bringing all of those ideas into creation with that masculine energy. And it's not only about work, 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 give, 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 but it's also about allowing yourself to receive, allowing yourself to take care of yourself and nurture yourself, which is that feminine energy. So if you feel like you're falling more into one of the scales, one of the spectrums, either that masculine that's always working, 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 um, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more, then it's time for you to start taking care of yourself. It's a lot time for a time to start allowing yourself to receive some nurturing time and some nurturing energy for yourself. If you're one to always be imagining or daydreaming or feeling like you need someone else to bring your ideas into creation, then it's telling you, um, start exploring this masculine energy that allows you to be skillful as well, that allows you to also bring creations into reality. Start working on your projects, start being um, focused, determined, perseverant, right? It's having both, both of these energies. It's kind of connecting to them because you already have them. You have them. It's just, it's time to connect with them and bring them both out of balance, right? Um, because I feel like the Ten of Stones, like I was saying, is a very happy card. It's a very safe space. And you have that within you. If you don't feel like you have it yet, you have that possibility. It's just bringing balance first. Finding that balance and you will be able to see your home. Because remember, this is kind of like an archway, right? So it's like when you find that balance, when you feel it in your energy, you will finally be able to see the home. Because, it's, because it is there. The home is... 
you. It's like your higher self. It's your spirit. So as soon as you merge both of your masculine and feminine energies, then you will be able to connect with your spirit. And I, like I was saying with the third eye, like gain clarity, finally be able to see. I'm also feeling like if this is not only just family or home, if this is just in terms of relationship, specifically like a partnership or a romantic relationship, focusing on the balance within the relationship, if there exists a balance, if there is recipro reciprocity. If there is an equal exchange or an equal giving and receiving. Because how this relationship, the dynamic of this is going at this moment can give you a vision of how, you know, the future might be for you. Or if you are planning to maybe start a family with this person, it can give you an image of how this dynamic is going to work or play out. I also feel like this is in terms of if you have different views, different beliefs, it's finding balance in terms of respecting each other's differences and finding balance in that so that you can create a harmonious home. So that can you, you can create a harmonious union so that this has a potential to be long term. And why I mean long term is remember, it depends on the foundations, right? If we have built upon a sturdy foundation, balanced foundation, then we know that the home that we built upon it is going to be stable. No mattering if an earthquake hits, it's not going to fall, right? Because no relationship is ever perfect. There's going to be some stumbles here. There's going to be some arguments. And it's saying that, you know, your, your relationship is balanced enough. There's enough respect. There's enough like reciprocity that if an argument occurs, if a conflict occurs, some obstacle arises, it's not going to fall at the sight of it, right? It's going to make it through. Okay, so now let's see the other cards. So focusing on this, what will it help bring in? Abundance. That's perfect. Yes, that is what the Ten of Stones is. It speaks about abundance. It's something that gives to you. Now, I know some of us look at the Abundance card and we immediately think like in terms of finances, this is pentacle energy. So it can, it can very well be speaking about finances. If this is not only home or family life, family life, if it's in terms of a business and what we're talking about is a partnership, right? Then finding respect, mutual respect between you and your partner, finding the balance, um, realizing that both of you are equally important will help bring this abundance, right? Because if it's like a, two business partners, sometimes when that happens, one business partner might feel like they are more important than the other or that they give more than the other. Sometimes that may be the case, but it's realizing that both of you are important. Both of you are the pillar of this business. So if one of you falls, then the whole thing falls, right? So it's respecting each other and also giving to the business or to the project equal effort. Both of you must put in equal amounts of energy, time, and effort. Because if one puts more than the other, again, it creates an unstable foundation, right? Then this whole thing falls. I do feel like the theme here is about balance. Balance creates stable foundations. Stable foundations will help you make it through, through everything and will guarantee abundance to you. Because look what the home is represented by, a tree. This tree will continue giving to you continue growing and giving to you flowers fruits whatever it is as long as you both continue nurturing it in equal amounts and again this could be financial abundance but it could just represent emotional abundance i also sometimes see this as representing memories collecting a lot of memories so if this is in terms of family or home life it's finding balance in the home life Focusing on your family. If you feel like you've been focusing too much on work and you've been leaving your family life behind, it's time to reconnect with your family because I do see the sense of love for the family. So it's time to reconnect with the family and see that there is much fulfillment you can get from your family and you can give to your family. So much you can collect, so much abundance you can collect from these moments. Because at the end of the day, I'm not saying finances are not important because we live in a physical world. Of course they're important. But at the end of the day, what you will be taking with you are memories, are the experiences. So make sure that you're taking with you beautiful memories and beautiful moments.
Make sure that that's what you're harvesting, that's what you're reaping, that's what you're creating. And usually the most, the most beautiful memories are the memories we create with others, the memories we create with our loved ones. And I am seeing that because we do have a lot of green here and that represents for me like the heart chakra. So like emotional abundance, emotional fulfillment. So what will you be releasing or healing? <laughs> we have work. Okay, yeah, so some of you might be putting a lot of focus on work and it might even be this workaholic energy. You might wake up and the first thing you think about is work. You might wake up and the first thing you do is start working. You even might skip your breakfast. It's just right working or checking your emails, start replying to those emails. The last thing you think about before you go to bed is work. When you might have your partner laying next to you in bed, when you might have children to kiss goodnight, when you still might have your mother with you or your father with you, who are maybe asking or calling for your attention, but you know, you're too busy checking on those emails. And it might be because you feel a responsibility for your work and you might feel responsible towards your family thinking that work is the only way that you can bring abundance to them, that you can provide for them. And Yes, we are acknowledging your efforts and you're doing a great job in terms of that, but this is not the only way that you can provide abundance to your family. There, there is also you, you yourself, as the parent, as the sister, as the mother, the father, the son, the daughter, the brother, whoever you are, you can bring abundance to your family with your presence, with your being, with your love, with your mind. So do not believe that you are only here to be the, the working bee, the honey bee. Your presence also provides joy. You are so much more than your work. So much more than your work. And also, there's many more other things that can bring you a sense of abundance. And remember, abundance does not necessarily mean financial wealth or material wealth. I think your higher self wants you to discover and find out that there is other forms of abundance emotional abundance mental abundance learning about things if this is not only work this could be in terms of like also studying focusing so much on study that you forget other things just remember too much of one thing is not a good thing it means that your scale scale is off balance so it's just finding balance you can continue on your work you can continue studying, business, whatever it is, but also allow yourself to explore other things. Allow yourself to give some attention to your family or to start other creative pursuits and relationships to not only place so much focus on your partner, but some, give some love to yourself as well. Because this is also about like working a lot on a relationship. You putting a lot of the work in. And believing that that's your responsibility to be the one to put the work in. But now it's releasing that mentality and realizing, A, I also deserve some love. And I also deserve some time and nurturing energy for myself to give myself that love. And yes, you do. You do deserve that. Okay, so again, balance. Balance between the work, the home, school and the home or school and work, whatever it is, in terms of partnership as well. Remember that if this is like business partnership, remember that every bee in the beehive is important. Every single bee is important. They all play an important role. No bee is less or more than the other. Even in terms of like the queen bee and the regular working bee. Yes, the queen bee is the queen, she's important, but what is a queen bee without her working bees? She wouldn't have a beehive. What is a working bee without its queen bee? Lost, right? So they are all important. So it's learning that, respecting that, understanding that, and exercising it in the relationship by bringing balance, okay? And how to bring focus to this? Mm, we have the queen of swords. We were just talking about a queen queen and we have the queen of swords here so sword is air energy air energy is correlated with mind thoughts also with communication the queen of swords i always say is a very blunt and straightforward energy when she decides on something she doesn't hear second opinions she is 
set on her decision and she can easily cut away with things. If a relationship is not working for her, if their own argument arises, if somebody doesn't see her point of view, and if she gets mad and she decides to cut away with it, she cuts away with it and there's no turning back. I feel like the Queen of Swords doesn't give second opportunities, right? I also feel like the Queen of Swords can be a bit arrogant at times. If you feel like there is a Queen of Swords energy in your relationship, you yourself might embody it from time to time. Again, it's telling you a balance is required. Before making a final decision, if there is an argument that arises before making a decision of who's right and who's wrong, I know it might be difficult and I know you might not want to do it, but try to see it from both point of views. Balance things out first before you make a decision like this, a rash decision, because I feel like if this might be representing you, these rash, rash decisions might have a, brought a lot of heartache in the past. Like in the moment you make this decision and it might be because you don't want to go back on your decision that you just move onward from this, but there might be some regretful moments. So before making such a harsh or rash decision, mindful breathing. <laughs> yeah, be mindful of your breathing. Take a moment, take a moment to step back. Balance the situation out. If you're still not okay with it, if you still can't find a solution, a balanced outcome, balanced solution, then we move on from there. Different different choice, different decision. Because I think that the Queen of Swords also is very logical. She's very intelligent, very smart. And so um, sometimes it, it might be that she doesn't easily take the opinions of others because she's usually... I would say she's usually almost always right because she is such an intelligent being. But again, this might cause some like this some disruption in relationships when she comes off this way. It might bring others heartache. It might feel like they're not being listened to. They're not being valued. Again, it might cause that imbalance in the relationship. It's not saying dim your light um, to make others comfortable. I'm not saying that. It's just you know like. Yes, if this you feel this is to be you, yes, you are intelligent, yes, you are smart, yes, you bring new ideas to the table, but be be open from time to time from to hearing other people's ideas. They might bring something new as well, something that maybe you haven't seen. There's a possibility for that. And just remember that relationships thrive, truly thrive, become an abundant home, abundant relationship when there is balance, when both of the partners feel like they're equally being listened to like their ideas are being equally received and respected because we do have cupid here and cupid might represent love but i usually see it as instant it's instant love so it's a love that burns very hot one moment but then burns out the other so again i'm seeing this as like hastiness or rash decisions i also feel like there is this, it's Cupid, when he shoots his arrows, what he creates is an unrequited love. So it's only one person who's infatuated with the other, but the other one doesn't care at all. Um, and so I'm seeing, a, again, an imbalance here. So someone might be giving too much to a relationship, to a project, to something, and the other one is not. Again, this might be like, you're putting too much passion into this, a lot of idea into this. Um, a lot of hopeful energy into it but you're not really working on it to bring it into fruition again if it's if it's like manifestation remember that it's not just about visualizing it and manifesting it but it's also for you to put some physical work into it so if it's like a job that you want not only praying for it but actually applying to places that can offer the job that you want right it's putting some of your effort in it so then the universe can meet you halfway so it's working in balance with the universe right you're both putting in equal amounts of energy into it to make it come true so that's what i'm also seeing it with this um cupid energy here okay so i feel like it's mostly about balance now i need to add some keywords I get that was a lot okay so we have commitment and we have relationship yes so i feel like commitment and relationship we were talking about relationships bringing balance into the relationship bring bringing balance into a commitment this is queen of sword energy as well before committing to a decision to a choice before committing to saying something to someone 
balance it out first in your head and if you still feel the need to say it after you've seen the different viewpoints after you balance it out after you're taking a time to breathe it out then well say it right it's just allowing yourself to truly mean what it is that you're you say truly mean your choices um before making them okay because remember i was feeling some regretful sense here with the queen of swords we do have communicate so again communicating your relationship communicate um, if you are feeling a sense of imbalance here communicate that feeling to your partner if you if you are still not being listened to then the opportunity to choose whether you want to continue this relationship or not will be given to you because you will get kind of like we said like a peep into the future of how this relationship is going to be if nothing really changes at this moment okay so communicate and listen also communicate with your family if you haven't communicate with your loved ones also about listening listening to what they have to say listening to others so um again i feel like reconnecting with your family or finding balance within this partnership relationship will allow for a new beginning to occur within the relationship a beginning of abundance as we have here we have projects with worker yeah so i feel like some of you are investing a lot of your energy in a project and it might be because it might not be giving fruition at this moment and so you feel like you need to work even harder but i feel like you're working a lot, but there's not a lot of emotion behind it. And if there is emotion, there's it's the emotion of frustration, of irrit irritability. Like we even have my neighbor's bird squawking very loudly because he sounds very frustrated. So maybe the reason why this project isn't working is because the energy that is being put into it is a frustration. So if you take a, a step back and... Um, allow yourself to be joyful or like create happy memories with your loved ones, right? Put yourself in an, an environment that is more joyful and happy and fulfilling, gives you another sense of abundance that will help bring in abundance. Remember, abundance is just abundance, but sometimes it's directed into finances, sometimes it's directed into emotions, to spiritual abundance, but abundance is just abundance. So if you find abundance within the home, I guarantee you, you will find abundance in your finances and your working situation as well. Because what will come, what you will bring into this other aspect of your life will be this energy of abundance. If you've already experienced it in your home life and you bring it into your working life, it will help grow abundance here as well. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, forgive. If, again, if this is in terms of family, if there has been conflict, forgiveness will help a lot in the healing of this and to like, will help to mend the relationships and will help to bring a more um, healthy, joyful family life, right? And sometimes, sometimes we might forgive someone, but doesn't necessarily mean that we still need to continue in a relationship with them. Sometimes the best way to go about it is to cut away with the relationship. Maybe that's why we do have the Queen of Swords here. If that is the case, like I said, if you can communicate your needs with this person, if you communicate you're being feel left out in some way or that you need something to change, to feel more respect, to feel respected, to feel respected in the relationship, but listening is not occurring, the other person is not putting in equal amounts of effort, then like maybe if you feel like it's time now to disconnect from this person, then that's saying that is totally okay. Okay, sometimes to have a harmonious relationship, it's better to cut connections, right? Or to create distance, to have distance from the person. You could still love a person from far away, okay? Um, but forgiveness is just about forgiving and letting go of the situation so that you won't carry any of that pain with you, okay? And the last one is body. The home does remind me of a body. We were talking about that, about finding home within yourself, about making your body your home, your safe space, and it did fall right on top of the home. So maybe this is about finding that balance within. And again, before making any like choices it's like taking a step back and truly seeing what you feel about the situation how you feel about a person and that will allow you to learn a lot about yourself um and find and find balance within yourself and feel safe within yourself because you know now that all that you say all that comes 
from you will be authentically and genuinely from you. It won't be just emotions that came through or stubbornness or anything of that sort. Or like beliefs, others' beliefs that were instilled in you. This will be coming from you, okay? So I feel like that is what is being asked of you to focus on at this moment from your higher self. Oh, this was a lot for this group. So now let me pull a message for group three. Wow, okay. My love is not fragile. This is a quote from Frozen 2 said by Crystal. It's time for a change. Okay? Hmm, I feel like I got the chills. I feel like this is very, these two go together, and I think it's a very specific message for someone. My love is not fragile, and it's time for a change. Okay? So that's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance and clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next moment, bye-bye.